I'm Sarah Silva, and I'm super excited for this chance to practice my oral presentation skills, which may or may not merit the use of the word skills, uh, in a low-pressure environment. So in the two modules we've done at this point, we've looked at different ways of analyzing how technology and society influence one another. In module one, we read Pinch and Bitchker, and they discussed, discussed the social construction of technology, um, which is multi-directional and it acknowledges the impact that failed branches of technology have had on the overall technology. In module two, Hughes pointed out that um, one of the social construction of technologies shortcomings is that it acknowledges the effect of society on technology but it doesn't examine how technology impacts society um, and he also talks about technological momentum in which technological systems uh, well gain momentum and begin leading to changes uh, to society with institutions like schools and bureaucracy. Um, and following that, Latour continues this line of thought by explaining how technology can be an actor just as much as humans. And he also discusses the skill trade-off that is a major part of human and tech interactions. Someone has to have the skills required for a job, um, and maybe that's humans in some instances, maybe it's technology, maybe it's a combination. So the technology I want to talk about today is the retail self-checkout. Um, self-checkouts were created to save labor costs for retailers, although they are marketed as allowing customers a faster and more convenient checkout process. Um, this technology was created to solve a small problem, some labor costs, for a small group of people, retailers. However, it affects people employed as cashiers and it affects all store customers. Uh, so basically our entire society because it's very difficult to live in this society and not buy things at stores. There are mixed feelings about this technology. Um, retailers want to save money, but they also want to keep their customers since that's how they make money. So customer response um, to self-checkouts has an impact on store use of self-checkouts. Um, customers feel less valued, both from the lack of human interaction and because they're expected to provide skills that cashiers once did. Um, and we're back to that skill trade-off that Latour talked about. Um, the technology can't bag your groceries for you. There's no cashier to do it, so you're bagging your own groceries. Um, and cashiers are threatened. More self-checkouts mean that it's harder for them to find work. And this is only partly alleviated by hiring a person to supervise several self-checkouts. That saves some jobs, but it doesn't save as many as are being lost to the technology. Now, these self-checkouts are affecting social relationships most often by either eliminating them or limiting them. If the checkout goes smoothly, the customer won't interact with an employee. If something goes wrong, um, or as I've found, if you're at Target and you'd like to use the self-checkout to buy alcohol, which is a thing you are now allowed to do, a store employee will come over and provide assistance, like verifying that you're of age to purchase alcohol, um, which is a skill that the machines are not yet capable of but it's a much shorter interaction than at a traditional checkout counter. And that's one of the main issues with the self-checkouts. There are, at this point in the development of the technology, skills they can't provide. Some of these skills are provided by the supervising retail employee, like checking ID and product loss prevention. Um, some have to be performed by the customer, like I said earlier, such as scanning your groceries and bagging your groceries. Uh, some people don't mind this, but other people dislike having to provide labor that they are accustomed to having done for them. How this tech uh, will adapt or fail to adapt is still unclear. Some stores have responded to customer disapproval by eliminating self-checkouts. I was surprised to read that this is what happened with Walgreens considering the personal nature of many of the items that one purchases at a drugstore. 
but customers seeking privacy may have chosen to find it in other ways, such as making purchases online. Some stores, and I'm going to use Target as an example again because I spend a lot of time in the Target self-checkout, uh, have altered the way self-checkouts affect human interaction. Unlike many store self-checkouts, Target supervising employee is positioned so that they can greet every customer that approaches the self-service area. Other stores put the supervisor at their own small counter, um, which is at a distance from the actual self-checkouts. Target doesn't do this. The employee is always moving through the self-service area and they can respond to requests for assistance immediately. Stores that follow Target's model will make it possible for this technology to be employed without substantially impacting customers' interaction with employees. However, this is still going to lead to a reduction in retail jobs. Some people taking a broader look at the impact of replacing human labor with technology have suggested that automation may replace more and more jobs in many different fields over time, eventually leading to a situation in which jobs are just not available for everyone. We may one day have a society in which many people simply can't work because the jobs don't exist. Um, they'll have to find new ways to fill their time, which will have an impact on how people interact with each other. And it also brings up the issue of how to support these people. Uh, one controversial possibility is universal basic income, in which the government provides everyone with a regular income large enough to support necessities like food, shelter, clothing, uh, hopefully hygiene products. And meanwhile, those with jobs would have additional income to support luxuries. But I think it would be interesting to see how people without jobs find ways to provide themselves with more than just the basics, as anyone would want to do. Um, however, we're going to have to wait and see how the technological momentum of the self-checkout and other forms of job automation um, play out before we get any answers to that question.